One of the next important business, one of the next important issues with dealing the business cycle is actually what is the business structure that you have created when you started your company during the startup. Now, there is a huge difference between a legal structure and an organizational structure. And what I want to talk about is the legal structure for a minute. And remember, I want to preface this by saying I am not a practicing attorney. So don't say, well, Raymond said, because I'm going to deny you in knowing you. All right. So there is a big difference between how the, the, the company is organized with the state and how you internally organize reporting structure like teamwork and hierarchy and things of that nature. But the business structure can greatly impact the life cycle or especially you'll see it in the growth and exit phases, okay? The startup phase is important to think about, but you will see the importance of these structures during one of those main phases of during growth and exit. Coffee is the juice I live on. There are advantages and disadvantages to obviously sole proprietorship, corporations, LLCs, partnerships, and we're going to cover some of those. But ultimately, a person chooses one of those entities based on one of the four following reasons, or maybe a combination of the reasons, as to why you picked sole proprietor. Anybody in here a sole proprietor? A couple of you. Most of you probably LLCs. Yeah, few corporations. So most of the thoughts that go behind between which one you picked was for personal liability protection. So operating your business under a corporate veil is going to kind of protect your asset should your business run into issues. We'll talk all about this, but that's one of the main reasons. It's probably the most common that most people think is, I want to protect my stuff, okay? Now, <clears throat> the transferability or the ability to transfer ownership to a uh, group or to another company through a acquisition or a merger, that's going to play a role as to whether you want a C corporation or an S corporation, because you can sell stock, you can move it, you can transfer it, you can do all of this other stuff. So if ultimately one of your goals is maybe to get acquired, you might want to think about that business structure. Obviously, flexibility is an important consideration. Do you want to manage it how you see fit, like a sole proprietor? I'll do what I want to do. And then there are obviously tax reduction strategies that can play into your decision of flow through entities like an LLC or a C corporation. All right. So all of those have are reasons why a person would choose one of these four. So let's look at the big four that we're going to talk about. Actually, there's three, but you'll see what I mean. So the most common one that everybody knows about is what's called the sole proprietor. It's obviously the easiest to create because ta-da, you're a sole proprietor. It also gives you complete control of your business. It is however you want to do it. You're automatically considered a sole proprietor if you don't register something else, all right? So you really have to do nothing to be a sole proprietor. You know, you wake up one day and say, I want to start a business. Okay, boom. In sands of filing any corporate documents, you're a sole proprietor, all right? Now, here's the problem. That means that all of your assets and all of your liabilities are now not separate from your personal assets and your personal liabilities. You can be held personally responsible 
for debts or obligations of your business activities. All right. So sole proprietor, I own the computer, I own, you know, the desks and all of that. If that brokerage gets in trouble, that could then potentially be attached to my house. And you go, well, wait a minute, that's not bit doesn't matter. You're sole proprietor. They don't separate business and personal. It's all personal. The other thing obviously is if your intent is to maybe initially, hey, I want to go for an initial public offering. I want to take the company public. I want to raise funds. I want to do all of this other thing. Banks and all of these people are going to be hesitant to lend to sole proprietors. So the advantage of, hey, it's mine, I'll do what I want to do. The disadvantages is of obviously the liability issue. Now there is a second one called a partnership. A partnership is basically just a simple structure that allows two or more people to own a business together. And that partnership is either a limited partnership or a limited liability partnership. And basically in that you have one general partner, one limited partner, and all the other partners or well, all partners are limited unless they are uh, a general partner. Okay. Limited liability partnerships are similar to limited partner, but they give limited liability to every owner. So it's called an LLP. You probably do haven't seen a lot of these. LLPs are really great for professional groups. Um, realtors might get together. Uh, attorneys, you see LLPs. You see groups of dentists that may be LLPs. So you get a general partner that has an unlimited liability. He's responsible for most of the liability. And then you get a limited partner who would be limited in their uh, liability. An LLC is a limited liability company, a limited liability company. It is kind of a hybrid. It's a new kid on the block. It's been around since the late eighties. Um, it lets you take advantages of the benefits of a corporation, but works more like a partnership structure. Uh, it does protect you from some personal liability in most cases. It also uh, does segregate personal assets from business assets. All right. So you've got a personal desk at home, but your LLC has a office desk at work. Those would be separate properties. Now, LLCs, and once again, not an attorney, also not a CPA. They are what they call flow through entities meaning that the profits and losses, if you have any, pass through directly to your personal income without facing any corporate tax, all right? However, they are considered self-employed, any member of an LLC, and therefore you have self-employment tax contributions towards Medi uh, Medicare and Social Security. Get what I'm saying? So in other words, an LLC could be owned by two people, 50-50, and half of the income goes to one person and the other half goes to the a second person. The good thing in this particular case, because the LLC pays no taxes, no corporate tax, my half of the LLC that was the profit is taxed on my income basis and if you were the other owner and you got half of the income, it would then be taxed at your half or at your ordinary income basis. LLCs are great for medium or higher risk businesses or owners with significant assets they want to protect. You can also pay a lower tax rate when they are held with a corporation, which is what we're going to talk about here now. I put a little pet peeve up here on the screen. I want to make sure everybody sees this. 
because this is probably the number one mistake that I see uneducated people making when dealing with business structures. There's two of them and it frustrates me only because it's putting you at a personal disadvantage. The first one that I see a lot is when somebody has a, an LLC and then they tell me they're the president of the LLC. That is not correct. LLCs only have members, all right? LLCs only have members. They do not have CEOs and presidents and vice presidents. And a lot of people either A, don't know that, and I'm trying to educate the entire world, <laughs> all right? Or they want to put president because they think it sounds cool and it makes them sound like a big wig in the structure of the business. No judgment, but I know people that say that, okay? You're going to hear that same sentiment echoed from me here in a minute on the second mistake I see. But you should not call yourself the president or the L uh, CEO if you truly are an LLC corporation, an LLC uh, company, all right? You are a member. Now you can assign yourself a title, director, manager. Do not say president, okay? Obviously, the fourth, uh, third entity, but there's two types of them, is the corporation. A corporation is a legal person, and therefore it's treated just like a legal person. There are two of them. The Big Mama Luca is the C corporation, all right? It is a corporate and stands alone, separate from the shareholders, meaning it will make a profit and will be taxed as a person and can be held legally liable for its actions. It offers the strongest protection to the owners in the terms of segregating your personal liability. The cost is often higher for a corporation very, very key that you probably should get an attorney to create your corporation because there's got to be stock certificates. There's got to be articles of incorporation. You got to have uh, corporate meetings. You got to have keep meeting minutes. All of these things are very extensive as far as the process by which you do it, the reporting, the record keeping, because it is its own entity it does it give the best protection it does pay taxes now corporations are great if you ever decide you need to raise capital or raise funds you can sell shares of the stock meaning bringing in new owners you could use those stocks as incentive to attract new uh, employees to the company um, so it is a good choice for the medium to high risk co company and great if your plan is to ever go public. The next type of corporation is this thing called as S Corp. The way that you can remember S Corp as in special or small. It is still a legal entity, however, like the LLC, the profits pass through directly to owners and, and it is not subject to corporate taxes. Now, when you create your account or when you create your business, here's a key fact. When you create your business as a corporation, it will default to C corporation. You have to file a special form. I would have my accountant do this to elect to change that corporation to an S corporation. Otherwise, if you fail to make that election and that election has to be done, I think within the first three months or six months of the creation of the corporation, once again, 
check your CPA, okay? If you fail to do that, you become a C corporation. Well, hey, I get the great protection, but your company now has to pay taxes on the income, okay? So make sure that if you want to choose the corporate route, which is really cool, I have an S corporation myself. Matter of fact, I have two or three of them. You have to elect to modify your corporate structure from a C to B and S. You don't file for an S corporation. It's not granted automatically. You must file and ask for it. All right. So S corporations are great. Um, in my opinion, I love S corporations. They still have reporting issues. They still have meeting minutes. <laughs> I've got meeting minutes. And you know, the funny thing is every year I elect myself president and I win the vote unanimously, one to nothing. If I ever decided, if I ever lost the vote to be the president, I'm going to quit. <laughs> All right. So it does sound kind of funny because I do have meeting minutes where I take role and I call my name as the secretary. I call Raymond here. I'm here, here. We're all here. All right. Sounds kind of asinine, but because of the reporting structures that are required, that literally is how you have to do it. Now, here's my second big pet peeve. And this is probably numero uno when it deals with pet peeves. And I understand why people do it. I see a lot of times people saying broker owner on their business card. Now, let me modify my statement. If you're a sole proprietor, sure, say broker owner because you truly are the owner. All right. If it's a corporation, you're not the owner, dude. The corporation is the owner. You are a president or a, a CEO or a shareholder, you're not the owner. Don't advertise your company that is an S corporation or C corporation uh, and say broker owner on your card because the first time you get in trouble, an attorney on the other side of the table is going to try and claim that you are not operating as a corporation because you are telling everybody plainly on your business card, you're the owner, which is a sole proprietor. And therefore they're going to try and attach all of your personal uh, assets and suck them into a lawsuit if that's what happens. All right. Do you get what I'm saying? Everybody raise your hand. I'll snow again if you didn't catch my drift. If you say broker owner, you are in fact advertising as a sole proprietor something happens and you go, I'm a corporation, I get protection. That attorney's going to go, no, you're not. You're claiming owner, sole proprietor on your business card. Now, I understand a lot of you guys want people to think, your clients to think that they are dealing with the head honcho, uh, the big cheese, and it makes you feel good. And you think it's going to make them feel good because, oh, I'm talking to the owner of the company. But you are in fact, setting yourself up for a potential problem that's going to go wrong. Um, and I love my favorite quote is when nothing goes wrong until it goes wrong. And when it does in this particular case, shit's going to hit the fan. All right. Now, this is a case where you could say Raymond Modulin president. All right. For instance, real university is a corporation. It is an S corporation. I truly am the president of the corporation. All right. I never say I'm the owner. I'm the president of the corporation. So this is a pet peeve and I'm just asking you, and if you're doubting what I'm saying, feel free to contact an attorney, but you probably, <laughs> let me rephrase that. <laughs> you don't probably you definitely need to not say this on your card. Put broker president. Hey, that'll make, maybe that'll even make you feel even better. Don't use the word owner. Unless, of course, you are a sole proprietor. Hey, then it's fine. But what you're literally doing there is saying you have no corporate protection. All right. Um, if you have more than one, or actually even if you have just one agent underneath you, 
you uh, better sleep well at night knowing that you're a sole proprietor and you've got another person who you are liable for out there making statements. So I'm telling you, if you want to be in the status quo phase and it's just you as a sole proprietor and you're doing all your own stuff and you're comfortable with that, that's cool. No judgment at all. I did it. I was there for a while. If you decide you want to bring that first person underneath you, you better start looking at one of these other structures, mainly from a protection standpoint. And I go all the way back up to the original four things we talked about. The liability protection is the key asset or the key factor in using one of these uh, other entities, an LLC, a partnership, some corporation, the, L, uh, the S or the C. So you better think about that now. All right, cool. Let's move on.